I do take it for granted doing the everything up front. So it's a good reminder for me. All right, we will see if we can finish this one up tonight. For purposes of what we're doing, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we looked at this. I would like to go ahead and do a quick review. Uh, Psalm 64, this is God is in control. We know that David's in some attacks. And, and let's just stop there for just a second. I'm looking around the room and... I, mean, I can point out at least four or five attacks that have happened within this room within the last brief period of time. The attacks are real. Attacks are going to keep on coming. And we need to constantly keep in mind where our focus is. So let's catch up these really quick. Uh, Psalm 64, first thing we saw was the ruthlessness of the enemy. Uh, the enemy has no restraints. Our enemy is against us. Our enemy hates us. But we have a Lord who loves us, and we need to be thankful for that. Our first response should always be prayer. Verse 1, hear, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. This the idea of the meditations, the musings. David was continually praying. He wanted God to understand his struggles, and God cares. He wants to hear that prayer. Our application statement on that first one. Prayer should be our first line of defense as trials and attacks come. Too often, it's our last line of defense. We love to go to other areas. Then we look to point B, the desire to resist fear. Again, verse 1, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. David did not want to have this dread. David didn't want to be living life with this cloud over him and being uh, afraid of, of what was coming. That is like it, that is partly a defeat in and of itself. Application statement there. We're going to go through these quick. As we place our trust in Jesus, there's no room for the fear of anything else. Then we went to the enemy plots and rebels. The enemy plots and rebels. Verse number two. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. That idea of, of hiding is to protect, to cover, to put a shield around someone. He, David knew that he needed God to help him in his battles because often those battles that we see in verse 2 are a secret counsel. There's things that's happening that we don't even see. We don't know what's going on a lot of time with, these scheme, with the schemings. And David is asking for God's help through this. Uh, application statement there. Come up. There we go. Continually remind yourself that though others may be against you, God is totally for us. That's, that statement stands out tonight for me. Uh, continually remind yourself, though others may be against us, God is totally for us for us. We have a God that loves us, and we can trust him. Point D, the enemy rehearses their evil. Verse 3, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. He's likening their, their, the, the battle, the, the weapons of a physical battle to their tongue, to the words that they're using. They are striving to just harm David with their slanderous words. Your application statement. As you notice the thoughts forming in your mind against others, ask God to put, put to help you put on kindness instead. And then the enemy has no regrets. The enemy has no regrets. Verse number four, they shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and they fear not. So these, these attacks that they make, they're unexpected. They're unprovoked. And it's just these bitter, untrue words. If you've, um, most people have been attacked in some way like this with words that are just cutting and they are painful. And the enemy just does not care. And that's exactly what our Lord went through. And we, we should expect no different. 
let's on our side, let's not be cowards and shoot each other in secret, but instead try to love each other and address our problems biblically. Then point F, the enemy rally around each other. This is probably the verse that was most, has been most impactful for me because just as we see the enemy in verse five, it says they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? Just as the unsaved love to support each other and help each other in their evil and teach each other how to do wrong, that's what we're supposed to do as believers on the positive side. We're to encourage each other. We're to edify each other. And we see the unsaved do it in multiple areas of life. But this is what we come together for is to pro provoke one another to love and to good works. It shouldn't be, well, let's come to church to check off our box. We should come to do that provoking, to do that pushing. And that, that's the, this is the part of this chapter that has just spoken to me so much uh, during this week. Uh, your application statement, while the world is actively pursuing evil, we should actively be pursuing holiness. If I'm going too fast, just wave your hand. I'll stop for a second. We can get these going. Uh, point G, the enemy has no restriction to their evil. The enemy has no restriction to their evil. Verse number six, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. They are looking for ways to do evil. They are exceptionally creative. The, the, the enemy knows how to dig down deep and find a new way to do wrong and how to sin. And they love to sin against God's people. And that's, it's something that's, again, it's what David went through, it's what our Lord went through, and it's what we're going to go through. We need to be expecting it. And the key is not just expect it and live with it. It's you know, use it to have God grow us, look to him. And, and that's the key. How do we respond? It's not what is the trial. It's not how bad do things get. It's how do I respond to what God allows to bring my way? Do we really believe that God is in control? I'm going to have to say often the answer is no. Because if I believed he's in control, it would affect my attitude differently. Application statement here, determine and ask God to help you to focus on him and his word instead of on revenge or vindication. That's our attitude part. Determine to ask God to help us focus on him. If we can get that one thing down in our Christian walk, we will be miles ahead. It's our attitude. Okay, then everything changes. That's through verse six. Everything's an attack. Everything's in a sense negative. But then verse 7, but God, but God, that's the key. We see the revenge of God, the revenge of God. God has his own resources. He has his own resources. Verse 7, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So in verse 3, they're bending, they're ready to shoot their arrows. Verse four, suddenly they shoot at David. Now all of a sudden, God is going to suddenly shoot his own arrows. It's kind of like poetic justice. They're going to shoot their arrows where God's arrows are bigger. God's arrows are more accurate. God is going to give them what they've got coming. And God has his own resources. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be concerned. God will take care of it and we can trust him. That's the main point. That God has this mess under control. Application statement there. We must concentrate our efforts on faithfully following Jesus and leave the vengeance to him. Concentrating, concentrate on faithfully following Jesus. And then we saw that God will reverse their plans. Verse number eight, so they shall make their so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. This is very similar to the last verse, verse seven, that God turns their arrows on them, and here he tongue, he turns their tongues on them. God will deal with 
the unrighteous. He will take care of these issues and we can trust him. And I guess if you were to leave here with nothing else again tonight, this would be the point. We can trust God. When attacks are coming, when trials are coming, God is trustworthy. I need to be reminded of this often. God is trustworthy. And that brings us to our passage for tonight. Or did I miss one here? I did. Uh, let's strive to allow our testimonies to be an influence to further the cause of Jesus and not to be a hindrance. That phrase is scary for me, thinking that we can actually hinder the work of God in somebody's life by, by my testimony. We need to be striving to be a positive influence with that. Okay, now for tonight's. Our last point is God, the, the result desired by God. The result desired by God. So let's pray one more time as we look into this new verse, and we'll get started. Lord, I thank you again for your goodness. Lord, thank you for this time that we can look into your word. I pray that you would help us to understand it, help us to Lord, have it applied by your spirit in our lives. Use it to strengthen us. Use it to direct and to encourage us. Help us to walk away from here tonight, trusting you more, loving you more, and giving you more glory. Lord, I thank you for the time we can have. I ask for your help as I preach this passage. Help my words to be accurate. Pray you'd use it to glorify yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the result desired by God. As, as hard as this is sometimes, it's easy to say, but sometimes it's just hard to hear. Uh, life is not all about us. Life is not about me getting my way, me getting ahead, me having my way, me getting my bank account bigger, whatever it may be. Life is not all about us. Life for the Christian, life is about God. It's about furthering his kingdom. It's about promoting him. Um, the phrase, John, what, what did John say? He must, he must increase, I must decrease. It is about God. We don't, I can't say that. I don't do that well. I am really, I, I think I'm, Usually okay with he must increase, but I don't like the I must decrease. I don't like the fact, and with John, that was context specific, but the, the, the point is there, it's not about me. It's not about me getting my way. I should be seeking to further the cause of my Lord. And here's what's, what's humbling with this. For whatever reason, God has set it up. God allows you and I to be a part of this furthering his kingdom in a very small way. He allows us to be involved in this, but the goal is him getting glory for himself. He lets us participate. He lets us grow through it. And that's what we're going to see in these last two verses. It is about God and it is about him getting glory, not us getting our way. So first thing, we're going to see here, God will be reverenced. God will be reverenced. Before we look at verse 9, look back up to verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, who will see them? They're saying in that last phrase, who's going to notice what we do? We're going to get away with this. Everything is smooth. We have this under control. Look at verse 9. All men, and all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. Everybody is going to be seeing what happens. Everybody is going to have this fear, this reverence of God. It is going to happen, and everybody is going to notice what gets done. A phrase, a, a verse, a phrase of a verse, we will all give an account. Everybody is going to stand before our Lord. But the, the result here, 
that David is pointing out is that all men will have this fear. All men will have this reverence for God. And this is not talking about a slavish fear. This is talking about this godly reverence. This is talking about each one, each person will praise our Lord as he judges the enemies. This is hard for me to picture in a way. As I picture seeing the judgments happening, I don't know how that's going to fall, how it's going to come about. But it's hard to imagine, you know, being actively praising him as people are condemned. But this is going to happen. We are going to praise him because what he is doing is going to be totally right. Now, are there any verses that come to your mind when you think of every person worshiping God at some point? Do any verses come to mind? Which works? Which what is that? One? I didn't have that one down. That's good. Whatever it's called. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. Okay, right before that, we'll have their crowns before him saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord. Yes. That is going to happen. There was that prophetic view into the future. He will receive all glory and power. Excellent verse. Someone else. Which is it? What does it say? Okay. Okay. That's going to be nice. It's going to be a relief. Any others? A verse that talks about all are going to Worship God. All. What's that verse? Go ahead and read it or quote it. Either one. He was the form of God. And thought it not robbery and evil of God. He humbled himself and gave himself a better reputation. Born in the form of the servant of David, made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion of the Lord. Uh, anyway, after the cross, therefore the Lord has highly exalted him, given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess whether or not he is in heaven. Oh well. That's right. And they they confess that to the glory of God. Isn't it neat that it says every knee shall bow? Every tongue is going to confess. Jesus will be worshipped by every tongue. Again, I don't know what that's going to look like. But we know what's going to happen. He is going to be seen as he is. He's going to be worshipped. He's going to be held up high. In this verse, in verse 9, in, you know, Psalm 64, they'll declare the work of God. There's not going to be a silence. This is not going to be just an, an awe, an, an awe-inspired, I don't know the words there, but it's not going to be just us looking in awe. It's not going to be just us thinking, we're going to declare this. There's not going to be silence. This is going to be one of those things, I don't know if you've, if you've ever had these happen, where you just can't keep your mouth shut. Something happens, and you've got to let out a hurrah or something. You just can't stay quiet. This is going to be one of those times when we are, it is going to be total excitement and there will not be that ability to keep quiet. And that's going to happen again, verse nine, because they shall wisely consider of his doing. They will be attentive. They'll be carefully thinking about what it is God has done. That's what these, ver the, these words are referring to. So let's go back. And let's look at these then with our three, the three categories we've seen every time. First of all, David. How do we see this with David? Anyone? I've got mine written down. We, we'll, we'll go there if we need to. 
How does that apply to David? Think about his situation he's in. David is running from the enemy. David is being attacked. David is overwhelmed. He's overpowered. David is on the run and he's outnumbered. There is no human way that he should win in this battle. But God is for him. And here, David, he knows he is going to get back to Jerusalem. He is going to reign. He's going to set up his kingdom again. And what has been done in private against David, it's going to be shouted from the housetops. There will be no secrets. It's going to come out. Everybody, and let's go back to this verse 9, everybody's going to fear. They're going to have a fear. It's going to be of David, but it's going to be of God. God is the one that's going to give this victory, and there will be a fear, both of David as he comes back into town and of God. They're going to see David as victorious. They're going to see God did this work. They're going to declare the work of God done in David's life. And they're going to be very, that last phrase, wisely consider his doing. They're going to be very attentive they're going to be looking to the fact that God was working on David's behalf. God is going to be glorified by this. And David is pointing out in this direct application, people are going to see what God did for me, and they're going to praise God for it. And that's a blessing to think of as we look at how David's responding to his trials. So questions, comments on David. David's part alone. If you can keep up with me, you're doing good. Let's move on to Jesus. How, does, how do we see this applying to Jesus? All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. Did this happen with Jesus? Did it look like when Jesus was on this earth, did it look like he was losing? Let me rephrase that question. Did he lose? Did he lose for a little while? You think they killed him. Overwhelming odds. Jesus and 12 that ran away from him. They scourge him. They beat him. They crucify him. He's dead. He is literally dead. Everything, he's over, he's done. Everything is bad, but you know what? All men are going to fear because then he came back. He conquered death. And that gets back to the passage that John quoted. Every knee will bow. Every knee, is. everyone is going to fear him. All men shall fear and all shall declare the work of God. Our Lord is going to be praised for all eternity because of the work that he did, because of the power that he showed, because of the love that he showed, because of this plan, if you will, that he just came up with to redeem things like us that, were, that are not redeemable without God's help. God did this, and Jesus is the one who is going to be feared, who is going to be reverenced, even since the cross, think of it just in the sense of this last 2,000 years, this little movement that started in this little place. If you ever go over to Galilee, you can literally, all this area where Jesus spent most of his time, you can stand in one spot and see everywhere that it's talking about. It was that small. And that's where Jesus started. He did all of his work. And since then, what has been happening on this earth? That message has been going all over this world. Nothing has stopped that message from going forth. I remember hearing an illustration. I think it, I mentioned Bruce Buchanan this morning. I think it was him that had uh, told, told me this, this 
story. It's not an accurate, uh, and it's nothing biblical. So bear with me. But it, it was a conversation between God and angels. And in that conversation, he said, well, what's going to happen is these people who are putting their trust in Jesus, they're going to tell someone about what Jesus did. And that person is going to tell someone. And that person is going to tell someone. And that's how this message is going to be promoted through the world. And the angel said something like, well, what if they don't do it? What's the, what's the backup plan? And the answer was, there is no backup plan. That's it. It's you and me promoting what Jesus did. It's us having this, verse 9, this fear and declaring the work of God. That is God's plan for us to do. There is no backup. Angels aren't going to come and do our job for us. God is not going to write in the sky a message for everybody to read because we blew it. God, is God, God chooses to work through his people. And he lets us be a part of it. That is a blessing in and of itself. But this message, what God did through Jesus Christ, it is being declared all through the world. They shall wisely consider of his doing. People are still thinking on, giving attention to the work that Jesus did on the cross. And that is what we should be praising him for. What about us? How do we see this being applied in our lives? All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. These are tough ones. As we understand our own sin, as we understand the judgment of God, as we understand the judgment is going to come, the goal is for us to turn from our sin and turn to God. There's your repentance. That's the goal in life. The goal is for us to not be so focused on us, but to have a fear, a reverence of our Lord. That should be our passion. We need, to un we need to understand our need, yes, to be saved, our need to follow Jesus, but it's, that's not where it stops. Like we, that's what we're looking at this morning is this idea we need to yield our lives continually to our Lord. We need to constantly be fearing him and declaring the work of God that he's done in our lives. Once we enter a relationship with Jesus, the natural response should be to promote him. The natural response should be to, again, the middle of verse 9, declare the work of God. When I am not looking to declare God's work that he's done, how God can change people's lives, something is wrong in my spiritual life. I've got a problem. I should have a desire to want to share what God has done in me with other people. And when I don't have it, when you don't have it, there is a spiritual problem. Something's wrong and we need to do a reset. We need to get right with God and be asking him to help us, to be able to, to witness for him, to serve him. It is a mark of wisdom. It's a mark of wisdom. They shall wisely consider of his doing. It is a mark of wisdom to think on, to meditate on, to dwell on the workings of our God. That is a wise thing to do. It is something that God is honored by. It is something that you and I should be passionate about. Just to think on him, to meditate on him, to dwell on him, because he is good. He is a good God, and he is totally deserving of our allegiance. Your application statement. 
everyone will bow before Jesus eventually. So let's actively practice worshiping him today. Comments, questions. Yes. When you were mentioning about that, uh, your friend talking about you know, pain and things that failed and so, you know, man doesn't say When Jesus was talking about it, they asked him, uh, he said, he's keep quiet. I can't. Stones. Even the rocks are crying. Yes. Even the rocks are crying. Yeah. It's in creation. Yes. How much more we should be doing it. That's good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Pareció que estaba perdiendo. Looks like he like he was losing. Pero como dice no breve, pues tú Dios es en control. But like the title of the message is God is in control. Estaba cumpliendo cada profecía de él. He was um, en el Antiguo Testamento. Right. Each one in each one of the prophecies about himself. He murió. He died. And in time and manner that he planned out. Right. Pareciera que perdió. It would look like he lost. Pero la profecía dice. But prophecy said. en cada cañón. Pisará cuando pisará pues la serpiente la serpiente que era en el Oh, it, um, the serpent would bite his heel. Entonces, allí, con su there, su he declared his victory. And then his strength um, over death. Y él nos dejó. Mm -hmm. Como dice Segunda de Corintios 5 y 19. Segunda de Corintios 5 y 19. El ministerio de la reconciliación. Embajadores de la reconciliación. Y los ángeles anhelan ver la obra. The, the angels want to see the work. Está haciendo nosotros sí, a través de nosotros. In us through us. Por un poco de tiempo somos menores que los ángeles. For a little while we are less than the angels. Pero en el amado somos hijos. But in God's beloved we are higher than them. Sí. Uh, eh, en este sentido, todo esto, Wait, all the, todo el Antiguo Testamento, all the Old Testament, apunta a lo que Jesús iba a cumplir, points to what Jesus is going to complete, todo el Nuevo Testamento, all the New Testament, proclama la victoria de Jesús, proclaims the victory of Christ. Y nos enseña lo que está cumpliendo en nuestras vidas. And shows us it's what... Y nos enseña cómo, cómo se está cumpliendo en nuestras vidas. And it shows us how uh, it's coming to pass in, in our lives. Y como dice nuestro estudio. And how our study says. A ese grado Dios está en control. In, in all these ways, God's Vamos a verlo con ojos de plan, con la espada saliendo de su boca. Pues, well, we're seeing him with the, the eyes, like, towards the, the flaming sword out of his mouth. En su uh, costado, su nombre. 
his his name written on his on his back. Yeah, and to this song said for Jesus, but I am not a song. But with Jesus, the battle is in battles. Jesus is the one. Because Jesus is the one in front. Yeah, this is bueno recordarlo. Siempre es bueno recordarlo. All the time, it's good to remember it. Nos enfrascamos en tormentas, dificultades, luchas. We come to uh, battles, hard times. We're, we're at the bottom. God's in control. Amen. Amen. You're right. You got a great God. Got to keep our focus on him. Okay. Well, let's close in a word of prayer. And we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you again for your goodness. I thank you for this time we can have together to look into your word. It would help us to trust you. Help us to think on you and to remember the things that you're doing and that you've done. Help us to be actively seeking you. Lord, grow us. Help us to be more desiring to follow you. Lord, where there are struggles in this room, even tonight, would you please minister and remind us that you are totally in control and we can trust you and just do what's right. Lord, strengthen us, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.